So, should I think of you as my sister? I'm a Moloch named Ceres. I've inherited Selica's memories, that's all. And that doesn't make you the same person? What exactly defines a person's identity? I may have her body and her memories, but... <sighs> You're right. If your soul has changed, you're not the same person anymore. Even if I were Selica, I don't have the right to be called your sister. I followed Artorius's orders without question, sacrificing my own flesh and blood. What about me? I devoured you. I have no right to condemn you for what you've done. There's a difference, Velvet. I wanted you to do it. Even had I survived, I would have given myself to you before long. I wanted you to have my power, no matter the cost. But why? Right after the advent, Selica's memories returned to me. <sighs> it was then I understood what exactly it was I had done. Arthur, kind and caring, transformed into the cruel Artorius he is now. Why did your memories return? I don't know. I've heard that very rarely Malakim can regain the memories of their previous lives. Or perhaps this is my punishment for the pain I brought to you all. The stronger I feel my love for Arthur, the less I can forgive Artorius. My hatred of him has grown so deep I'm not Selica anymore. As Ceres, I can never bring back the Arthur that I loved. Neither do I have the power to defeat Artorius. But you can. You're a Therian. You fully absorbed my power. You can face the Shepherd. I know. I will stop him. Forgive me, Velvet. I've pushed everything onto you. My hatred, my determination. I wanted to apologize one last time, at the end. I'm glad I had a chance to know you. I'm glad that once I could be Lofi's sister. And Selica and Arthur's sister as well. I was happy. It. Should you be up so soon? Yeah, but... Stay back! <gasps> it's finally come to this. But of course it did. After all, I chose my revenge over a world of peace. I can't complain if people call me the Lord of Calamity. Velvet, whether you're human, demon, or Lord of Calamity... It doesn't change that you have beautiful hair. Lafi said the same thing to me a long time ago. He gave me this comb. Your heart, I can tell it aches. Yes. But even still, no, because of that, I've made up my mind. I'm going to settle things with Artorius and Inominat, once and for all. It must be done. For my sake, and for the sake of those I loved. I will too. Even without my compass, I'll place my hand on the wheel and chart my own course. I will defeat Artorius. But, if I kill Inominat, Lofi said, and me, and the other Therians, they'll all... A compass? Hmm...
She has that deadly aura, and I hope it stays on her in game. Eisen, why the hell didn't you say something? Hmm. Calm down. You were passed out at the time, okay? I'm going. I've got to stop him. What's going on? We got a message from the Von Eltia. That's great. Is everyone okay? Yeah. For now. Huh? While Benwick and the others were making their getaway, they got word that Eifried was spotted in Endgale. They said they're on their way to Lionel Island to meet him. That has to be... Yes, a trap. No doubt set by that horned demon, who may even be Eifried himself. Eifried is a demon? Are you serious? I said may. Let's head to Lionel Island. Whoever it is, it's a lead. Besides, we can't afford to lose the Von Eltia. How will we get there? Zavid probably sailed off with the ship we came in on. We'll steal one from the harbor. I may be a calamity, but I'm frugal. Everything all right? We're almost at Lionel Island, all thanks to this ship. She's got a good compass. Yeah. If only my inner compass held us steady. From the first moment I laid eyes upon that demon, I think I knew it was Eifried. But some part of me refused to accept it. That's because you're Eifried's friend, don't you think? After all, he taught you that the Reaper's curse was part of you part of your creed we were lost at sea once 20 straight days we floated together close to death and all he says is you sure know how to liven up an adventure he sounds like an incredible person you did the same thing for velvet you know only because you taught me how Eisen your wheel is yours to hold right that's right that's what it is to live by one's look it's Lionel Island! Not good. The Von Eltia's already there. <sighs> We're too late. Eleanor! What's going on? What happened? A horned demon attacked us out of nowhere! They're breathing. Barely. Zavid rushed here to save us. Had he not come when he did, we'd all be dead. This is all because I hesitated. Where'd they go? Zavid lured the beast away, towards the interior. Let's go! I'm gonna save this. I'm at 38 and a half hours. Nice, I'm getting close to that 40 hour mark.
that demon really I freed? Eisen would know better than anyone, so I'd take it as a fact. But I thought when people have a strong will like you and Kudogane, they don't lose themselves upon becoming a demon. From how Eisen talks about him, I'd say his strength of will should be considerable. Even if you don't lose yourself, a demon is a demon. When you change, you're no longer human. I don't remember how I felt as a human, but I bet the human me would have thought I'm a real monster. <sighs> but would the old part of Eifried allow him to be so obedient to the Abbey? No. He didn't seem to be following Melchior of his own free will. I imagine Melchior's illusory arts are at play. Like what we saw at Loringen in a ball? Is that enough to control a demon? It would seem so. But more importantly, someone with a psyche resilient enough to impress Aizen should be extraordinarily hard to turn into a demon. So Melchior must be using a particularly nasty illusion, eh? Eifried, Aizen, please be okay. We have to hurry! Zavid's all alone! Well, he's not exactly an ally. He's got his own creed. Remember the White Horned Dragon? He might try to protect Eifried. So Aizen might too, right? This is Eifried we're talking about, so... He's a demon now. He's not Aizen's old buddy anymore. <sighs> Even if we can't bring him back to being human, there has to be something we can do to make him... himself again. If he's a demon, he'll never be himself again. He attacked Benwick and the rest of his crew. The old Eifried's gone. So... what does Aizen plan to do? I don't know. That's up to him. Worst case, you might have to fight him, too. It's best you prepare yourself for that possibility. But... No buts, kiddo. I noticed, I noticed those elemental pillars that was Zavid, you all right? Stop. I know these fists. This is Eifried. Why didn't you fight back? Eifried, she pulled me back from the brink. <laughs> I owe him. This time, it's my turn to bring him back. A demon can never be human again. <laughs> so what? It's supposed to make me change my creed? What do you think, Eifried? <laughs> kids now <sighs> Benwick and your crew risked their lives by your side Zavid's an idiot but he stands by his beliefs I won't let anyone trample their creeds even you Everything, Eifried. And now, it's time to pay it back! Deception! Are you all right with this, Aizen? I am. Killing Flash! But I'm just close. I want this! Four zero! Yeah. <laughs> 
End of the road. Me! Taking hostages now. I'm sorry. Just forget about me. I'm I'm prepared for whatever happens. All right. You've grown. You're a man now. Family, friends, everything I ever tried to hold on to, all of it trickled away, fell from my grasp. But a certain idiot once told me, if you can't hold something in your hand, then make a fist and take it by force. This fist will take everything back. Just like you told me to! Uh. Uh.
A demon changed back into a human? Forget it. It's too late. I'm sorry. If I only knew how to use my power. Stop crying. Didn't you say you were prepared for anything? But, Eisen, you were searching for Eifried for so long. <sighs> You're still as soft as you ever were. Boy, I'll let you in on little secrets. Your power comes from being part of He Know Me Not. Which means, if you can seal off his domain, you actually got a chance of putting up a good fight. Seal off his domain? The four elemental Empyreans sleeping in the Earth pulses. If you can rouse them from their slumber. Hurry. While Artorius and Inominat are occupied, they're getting ready for some ceremony of suppression. It's now or never, kid. Thank you, Eifried. <laughs> I'm just sad I can't go with you. This sounds like a goddamn blast. I won't apologize. You shouldn't. I'm grateful. You always kept things from getting to home. If we ever meet again, let's raise some hell. Eisen. Yeah, we will. See you, Eifried. I owe you one, Zavid. We had a chance to bring him back. But you went and killed him. Next time I see you, we'll settle the score. Between me and your creed. See you around, Zavid. Oh. Inexhaustible Denor bottle. All right. So, we need to wake the four elemental Empyreans? But how do we do it? Dunno. Maybe you tickle their divine footsies with a feather until they... You're back! And you're looking better. Somehow. But what happened to that demon? We killed him. Benwick. He... Let me tell him. The rest of you, find Grimoire and ask her about the four Empyreans. Aizen. Are you sure? Do it. He gave us this chance. We can't waste it. Okay. Resurrect the Elemental Empyreans. True. If we do that, we might be able to suppress Inominat's domain. It may even liberate the minds of the Malachim that Inominat has under his control. I'm sure some will no longer obey their exorcists. Good. We'll take a big bite out of their forces. More importantly, Inominat will lose the ability to enhance the resonance of his exorcists. Most exorcists will no longer even be able to perceive Malachim at all, just like before. Of course, anyone as innately gifted as me is another story. Will I... become unable to see Lafayette? We won't know until we try. Eleanor... Then let's give it a shot. I'll... accept whatever happens. But these elemental Empyreans... 
They're gods, right? You sure it's okay to disturb their beauty sleep? They control the four elements. Waking them is likely to upset the balance of the world quite a bit. I'll take that as a no, then. We don't even know how to revive them. At worst. If it's anything like the opening, then we need to offer a sacrifice at the Earth Pulse on a Scarlet Night. We have to kill someone? The act of killing is not essential to the ceremony. All that's needed is a soul free of malevolence. Hmm. If that's true, then doesn't Velvet already have a whole belly full of them? The exorcists I devoured. It's perfect! You're Aetherian, you're capable of releasing the power you absorb. The souls of the high-ranking exorcists you ate should do nicely. Use Oscar and Teresa's souls to resurrect the Empyreans? It's worth a try, at least. When's the next Scarlet Night? Three years after the advent. In other words, soon. Hmm. Do we have enough time? The four Empyreans are asleep in different places, right? Correct. Four Earth Pulses for four Empyreans. But if you use a life pool, you may be able to awaken all four at the same time. A life pool? Earth Pulses normally flow horizontally, but in exceptionally rare cases, they can flow vertically. This causes energy to collect at the Earth Pulse's base, forming a life pool. Though sometimes the energy flows the other way, upward, into what's called a life spring. Ho-ho! So if we make use of one of these life pools, a single sacrifice could reach all four Empyreans. Where are they? There's a life pool in the northern reaches of Midgand. But I heard a large temple was built over it recently. That's the Empyrean throne! We can't go there, it's Inominat's home base! Ah. Uh. Most unfortunate. Couldn't we use a life spring? It all connects to the same place, right? We'll have to go against its flow, but... We'll force the soul right down its throat. Where's the nearest life spring? Our best bet would be Mount Killerouse. Aizen? I'm fine. What's done is done. Killerouse? That's the volcano on the northernmost tip of Northgand, but it's a hellscape of ice and lava! Naturally. Killerouse is the most powerful life spring there is. So, in short, we shove the souls of the exorcists into the molten core of that volcano. That should awaken the four elemental Empyreans. Together, they will seal off Inominat's domain. It's just a theory, but... It's one I'll put my money on. Me too. Then we're off to Northgand. Mount Killerouse is north of Helleviz. The ship's ready to sail. Where are you headed? We don't have a problem. If you've got a grudge, we can settle it here and now. Huh? Why would we have a grudge against you guys? The first mate fought like the first mate. The captain died like the captain, right? I suppose. Then no swabby here can blame you for what happened. We're Eifried's pirates, and don't forget it. We're not so pathetic that we need pity from some lord of calamity. All right. The ship's in your hands. Aye, aye. You can count on us. The Von Eltia looks the same as ever, but it feels utterly different, doesn't it? Yeah. Even Benwick looked like he'd been crying. I can imagine. But if we let ourselves despair now, we'd be a disgrace to Eifried's creed. We have to swallow our anger and grief, and sail on. Right. Following a creed isn't always pleasant. We must do what we must. I won't allow the Abbey to do things like this. Destroying someone like that, turning them into a puppet, it's unconscionable. Still, a heart can never be fully bridled. It can be shattered, but never erased entirely. Eifried proved that. Right. His body is gone, but he lives on through his crew. Magilu is right. What lives in one's heart can never be erased. Yeah, the heart is eternal.
or a Calcum or not, Stormquell snapped like a twig. I'm afraid so. It was Inominat who did it. But I think Shigure could have done the same. So hardness alone isn't enough. Forgive me. I thought I had found clarity, but it was only foolish pride. You should be proud. You are without a doubt the greatest swordsmith in the world. I'm looking forward to your next blade. Even now, you would still place your trust in me? Of course. Is there any other swordsmith who could craft a blade out of Orichalcum? You're a master of your art. A visionary who spent centuries working to forge a blade of legend. I'm honored to know you. I don't know what to say. Unless, of course, you've given up on making a sword to surpass Stormhowl. <laughs> Does this look like the face of a man who's given up? Not in the least. <laughs> We're making good time. The only problem is that ceremony that Artorius was going on about. We don't know how long it'll take. Eifried said they called it the Ceremony of Suppression. Most likely, it's how Inominat plans to release his power. Most likely. He hasn't absorbed Lafayette in your despair. So we know me not should still be incomplete, but if his powers fully awaken. Humanity will be robbed of their free will. I can hear them celebrating now. The uglinesses of the human soul are suppressed. And the world is free of malevolence. Hurrah, hurrah. Robbing humanity of its will. They'll be like I once was. Uh, something's coming! Hey, uh, please, guys, let's not fight! <laughs> The domain? Inominat's domain! <laughs> Their wills have been stolen! It's not been fully sealed away yet. Rokuro, give him a good smacking! Wake him up! On it! Aizen! Got it. We'll put in at the nearest harbor. To Port Zexon! <sighs> ah! I feel like some jerk played tug of war with my brain. Dig up some spirit. They're trying to strip away your will. It's that 
merchant. You're all right. I do not deserve to be all right. I used people, stepped on them just to make a profit. I even aided wanted criminals so that I could expand my business. My soul is black with ugliness and can never be forgiven. Huh? No, wait! Oops. Stop! The world needs to be purified of malevolence. I don't belong here. I have to die. I have to die. I have to die. No, it's not right! Oh. You can die if you want, but saying you have to die is a good way to make my blood boil. Those awakened to their own malevolence seek to end their lives. Welcome to Artorius's uncompromising world of reason. First they steal humanity's rudder, and now they want to say who lives and who dies? We should find out what's happening here, unless you'd rather not see. You're right, I wouldn't. But I won't hide from the truth any longer. Before anything else, we'll need to confirm just how far his power reaches. Let's head to Logris. You know me not suppression. Is this the ideal world the Abbey envisions? Bien! There's no life in anyone's eyes! This isn't a fun place at all! It's not just people's minds being shackled. They're being forced to die, too. It's terrible. Why would dying be part of anyone's ideal world? Even under such strict control, new sins can still rise to the surface. If that happens, it's better to end the life of the sinner. Melkier came to the same logical conclusion. What utter rubbish. Anyway, we need to get to Logris. What's going to happen to the world? How far will Anominat's power spread? When his domain expanded, I felt a faraway power suddenly come closer. It was enough to blot out the whole sky. I'm sure it's covered other towns too. His domain has certainly extended to at least the entire populace of this country. Otherwise, what would be the point? That means what happened at Port Zexen is happening everywhere. Everyone is either a puppet or... Dead by their own hands. Inominat created this ideal hell in a single moment. That's the power we're up against. So we few are standing against a truly monumental force. This is your last chance to turn back. Turn back to what exactly? Forward or back, we're headed into hell either way. At least this way, I'll have my own free will. I'd prefer a living damnation to that oblivion. Well, don't come crying to me later. Let's move along then. So this is the result of their ceremony of suppression. Seems that way. They've brought their peace to mankind. a fool for trying to sell commemorative chalices to the people visiting the Empyrean's throne. Happiness can't be bought with ill-gotten gains made through deception. In an effort to change my malevolent ways, I sold my shop and entered the holy priesthood. Rather than pursue my own greed, I've chosen to dedicate my life to bringing the sacred teachings to all. Wow, look how shiny and pure he is. So this is what happens when Enominot suppresses all of someone's sins and desires. How nauseating. And this is the kind of world they're trying to create. Kaki-Koo's Menagerie. Ooh, close. It's Mogilu's Menagerie. 
I apologize for always demanding that you entertain me, despite my inability to even remember your name correctly. I'm also sorry to you, miss, for always insisting you do that tedious little bird impression of yours. I feel so bad I could just punch myself. Nay, I must. I'm not sure if I'm more angry or confused. It is wrong to seek pleasure from viewing petty tricks and pointless entertainment. Honest hard work alone is right. Someone such as I, who was unable to live in accordance to the simplest of truths, should disappear from this earth. Please, use that special trick you told me of. Make me disappear forever. We must accept that we all grow old. I can no longer perform the physical labor that allowed me to benefit society. I no longer deserve to live here. I must find a place far from others. There, I will await a quiet death. This isn't someone accepting that they'll grow old. This is him refusing to grow old. If this spreads, we'll have no more old people at all. consume precious resources and grant no tangible benefit to society. That's why I say we should throw them all back outside. It's only right. I threw away my friend's entire pet beetle collection. They have been purged. This is all for the new order. But I want to keep my rhino stagros. It was the height of foolishness for a low-born person like me to hold on to romantic fantasies about Prince Percival. I should seek a male companion suitable to my social status, and live a life free of pointless desire and pride. Form, beauty, appearance, all are superfluous. Reason dictates that I seek a biological partner, who lets me live my life with greater efficiency. While what she's saying isn't technically wrong, it really really creeps me out. Even the capital is silent as death. Inominat's power did all of this. A god among gods. Fountains are purely decorative, and serve no purpose to the collective good of mankind. They must be purged. Not just the fountains. The streets and houses are filled with unnecessary extravagances. Comfort is another word for vanity. It is a lie that breeds only envy and war. All vanity must be purged. Yes, we cannot let ourselves be ruled by desire. We must control ourselves and lead lives of purity. If they keep abandoning desire after desire, eventually they'll abandon even their desire to live. I knew it. I said all along that taverns are dens of evil. Now there is no one left who desires that demon drink. It clouds man's judgment and causes good people to fall into corruption and sin. It should never have existed. Taverns shall now only live on in history books. I've always opposed the sale of nectar and intoxicating drinks. From now on, those places once known as taverns should be used to distribute food equally to all. Flavor is irrelevant. It is enough for food to fill the stomach and contain the nutrients necessary for survival. Food is not something that should be enjoyed. But eating is part of being alive. If you can't enjoy your food, how can you enjoy your life? I don't want to live like that.
Isn't there anyone here who still has free thought? I hope so. There has to be. <gasps> Mommy! That was a child. Don't show any feelings, dear. If they spot you, they'll... Prince Percival! Tabitha! You're still you! <laughs> Tabitha, your mind's still your own? Yes, somehow. But Prince Percival and that girl... Looks like those Malakim took them away somewhere. The Prince was trying to help us get away. He said that the Abbey was gathering those who still had control of their own will at the villa. We need to go after the Prince, and see just what's going on at the villa. We don't know what sort of defenses they have at the front gate. Let's sneak in through the back. Good plan. Back into the catacombs, then. You got it. <laughs> 